Hi guys, welcome. Uh, this is like uh, the fourth part of the percentage thing, which is population growth. In this section, we will learn more about population growth and we will have certain questions of PYQ, like previous year catch questions also, which we'll also learn in this section also, right? The population growth is very simple. And before going for the population growth, I'll give you one simple question. There is a question on your screen. So let us read the question together. Like due to 30%, decrease in mango price a man can buy 15 more mangoes what is the number of mangoes he used to buy previously now think about this kind of question this is a very generic question right and how we can solve this question remember whenever we need to solve this type of question the first thing you have to understand we use the basic like the basic is take the base as 100 so basically it is like in 100 rupees he used to buy mangoes now what is the reduction of cost the reduction of cost is rupees 30. Now in rupees 30, he can buy 15 mangoes, right? In rupees 30, he can buy 15 more mangoes in rupees 30. So in rupees 2, he can buy one mango. Yes. And in rupees 100, he can buy 50 more mangoes. Now actually he can buy 50 mangoes now. But the question is how many mangoes he used to buy previously? Previously, he used to buy how many mangoes? So whenever the question is about the previous case, previously he used to buy 15 less. So how many mangoes he used to buy? That is 35. So hence your answer is 35. So you can see how simple this kind of question is, but how important it is to make you understand like what exactly we are using to solve this type of question. It's a very tricky question. A lot of people uh, do this question incorrectly by choosing the answer option 50, but that is not the right answer. The right answer is 35. So let's go for the next thing. Uh, let's go for the next types of questions. Uh, first, we will learn about population growth and then slowly we will go into like the PYQ, 5 PYQ question and this is all about today's session. Like let's say in Delhi, the population of 1947 is let's say 2 lakhs. 1948 is 10% increase, 49, 20% increase and 50, 30% increase. I need to find at the end of 1950, what is the population? End of 1950, what is the population? So you have seen the data, right? Like the first way to solve this type of question is, let's say if 2 lakh is the population, so if 10% is increased, so what is the increase? That is 2 lakh plus 2 lakh into 10 upon 100, yes or no? That is the total population after one year. Because 2 lakh was the initial population, this is the increase. So the total population is 2 lakh plus 2 lakh into 10 upon 100. Now if I take 2 lakh common, if I take, now if I take 2 lakh common, that is 2 lakh or 200,000, then that is 1 plus 10 upon 100. Am I clear? So that is the population at the end of 1947, sorry, 48. Now think about this is the population, right? Now, in case of 1948, what will happen? You will do the same thing. Take 2 lakh things. Now, it is 1 plus 10 upon 100 was there. Now, there is this is the population 1947. For 48, for 1949, it has to be 1 plus 20 upon 100. So, it goes on same like this. For 1950, it has to be 200,000 into 1 plus 10 upon 100 into 1 plus 20 upon 100 into 1 plus 30 upon 100. Am I clear? So this is the population at the end of 1950. So you can see this is a lot more calculation actually. It is 200,000 into 110 upon 100 into 120 upon 100 100 into 130 upon 100. Now if you solve this question, you can find the answer obviously. But this is a lot of calculation you can directly see like by yourself. So this answer will have been become 3,43,200. 3,43,200 or 343,200. So this is the answer you can get after solving this. Now if you see this, this is a very lengthier process. But this process can be easily or simplified by using successive also. Now if you are going to use successive. So what I need to do, first I need to do of 10 and 20. So for 10 and 20 by using successive, the total increase is 10 plus 20 plus 10 into 20 upon 100. So hence your answer is 32, right? Clear? Second is 32 plus 30 plus 32 into 30 upon 100. So which is basically 71.6. 
So your overall increase is 71.6%, right? Your overall increase is nothing but 71.6%. Now initially your population is how much? 200,000 and it is increased by how much? 71.6 upon 100 into 2 lakh or 200,000 which will give you 1 lakh 43,200 and it is added with how much? 200,000. So your answer is 3,43,200 or 343,200. So that's any way you can pronounce it. So this is how we use the concept of population growth. This is the direct use of successive, easier. This is the use of the formula. That's why we generally use this thing, right? So similarly, if the reverse question is given. Now what is the reverse question? The reverse question is nothing but like the 1950 is given, but you have to find the answer for the next portion. Like if I say like this, like 1950, let's say the population is 200,000 and you need to find, right, find the population of 1947. So we can solve this question in this way also. Let's think about this is X, right? This is X, so I can write X into 1 plus 10 upon 100 into 1 plus 20 upon 100 into 1 plus 30 upon 100. This thing has to be equal to 200,000. So if this is 200,000, so what is X? So I can write X is 200,000 into 100 upon 110 into 100 upon 120 into 100 upon 130. You can see just the reciprocal of the previous thing. So you see just the reciprocal of this. So this is 110 upon 100, 120 upon 100, 130 upon 100. In this case, we will just doing the reciprocal of it. 100 upon 110, 100 upon 120, and 100 upon 130. Because if it goes in this direction, it will be just inversed, right? Or also you can solve this question by this way also. Let's say population is X. And I know this is same as 71.6%. What? 71.6%. So I also can write it's X plus 71.6 upon 100 into X, which is equals to 200,000. So in this way also you can solve this type of question. So in any way you can solve this type of question, but remember whenever you are solving this type of questions, this is something you have to understand. Like this is are going to help you in the future run, like the way we are solving. So you have to remember like how I'm solving and the approach is very much important whenever you guys are trying to solve this type of questions. So please give a lot more respect to the approaches while you are solving. So the next thing uh, is basically uh, we will go for now the PYQs like the previous year questions. We will discuss five previous year questions uh, to end with percentage. Now let's say this is the first question. The number of votes not cast for the PNC. The number of votes not cast for the PNC party increased by 25% in the national general election over those not cast for it in the previous assembly polls. And the PNC party lost by a majority twice as large as by which it had won the assembly polls. That means the previous election won. Like the previous poll, I am saying election one, and I am saying election two, right? So election one, PNC party won. So this is PNC, and this is let's say opposition. So PNC won election one, and PNC lost, and the opposition won the election two. Like the election one is the previous election, and this is the recent election, the next election. But it is also said in the recent election, like in the assembly polls, this is assembly polls, assembly polls, PNC won. And this general election, like PNC lost by twice as many votes by which it had won. Like if let's say they won by PNC won by X votes. So in this case, if PNC won by X votes, in this case, PNC lost by 2X votes. Do you understand? That is the meaning of the question. So what you need to find, you need to find PNC got in this. So you need to find this portion. This portion, you need to find the answer. Now, if PNC won the election in E1, like in the assembly poll, so PNC has to get more than half of the votes. So what is the total votes? 2,60,000 and what is the half of it? That is 1,30,000. So PNC, if provided there is no vote lost and all, and there are only two parties, the so PNC has to get more than half of these votes. That is 1,30,000. So what is things are given? Like PNC got no votes lost like no vote lost by in this process all votes are valid and the second there are only these two parties right so if what are the options which is more than one like thirty thousand there are two options which is one like more than one thirty thousand so one like ten thousand is not the answer one like twenty is not the answer so your answer is between one like forty and one like fifty
Now, if I check with one option, let's say if I check with 1,40,000, if the rest, all the data are at par with this option, then the answer is 1,40. And if this data, the rest, all data are not at par with 1,40, then the answer is 1,50. So I can check with any option, whether it is 1,40 or whether it is 1,50, it doesn't make any difference. Because otherwise, one other, like this has to be answered. If the answer is either 140 or 150. So let's think about 140. Like 140,000 is got by PNC party, let's say. So the opposition got 120,000. Now the opposition's vote is increased by how much? 25%. So what is 25 upon 100 into 1.2 lakhs? So this is basically 30,000. So the vote is increased by now 30,000 for the election too. So election 2, the vote become for opposition is 1,50,000. Now if the vote of opposition is 1,50,000, what is the vote of PNC? That is 2,60,000 minus 1,50,000, which is 1,10,000. Now in the election 1, in the assembly poll, PNC won by how many votes? 20,000 votes. But in the general election, that is election 2, PNC party lost by how many votes? 40,000 votes. And that is according to the question, it won by X votes and it lost by 2X votes. So that means all the other data is at par with the question. So hence your answer has to be 1 like 40,000. So this is how you can solve the cat question. So you can, don't need to solve it. This cat question can be solved by using equation also. But you are not supposed to solve this question by using equation. A lot of people might ask you what about theta if this is a theta. This was not a theta question. If it was a theta question, that was, wouldn't be the question. If they ask, want you to solve it by the equation method, they won't give you this kind of like values. Do you understand me? So then they could have given all the values which is more than 1 lakh 30,000. But they have not given you. They want to test your intelligence and test your skill and the presence of mind also. That's why this is the... This is how you should solve this type of question. So please understand like the approach to solve this type of questions. Very, very crucial in this point. Two fifth of the voters promised to vote for A and the rest promised to vote for B. Of this on the last day, 15% of the voters went back to their promise to vote for A and 25% of voters went back of their promise to vote for B and A lost by 200 votes. Then what is the total number of votes? This type of question, the easiest way to do this question is just take the total voters as 100 and see what happens and do the rest things accordingly. So think about it, the total voters is 100. So out of this, 2 fifth is promised to vote for A. So what is 2 fifth of 100? That is 2 fifth into 100. That is nothing but 40. So 40 promised for A. So this is like promised. 40 promised for A. Then the remaining 60 promised for B, right? On the last day, 15% of the voters went back of their promise to vote for A. So how many went back? That is 15% of 40. So 15 upon 100 into 40, which is nothing but, uh, let's say, 6 voters. So 6 voters didn't vote for A. They Instead, they vote for B, so plus 6. Similarly, for 6, that is 25% of voters gone back from their promise. So it is basically 15. So 15 voters didn't vote for B. So instead they vote for A. So that is plus 15. So here it is minus 6 plus 15. So what is the total voters vote for A? That is 40, 50, 65, 55. That is 49. And what is the total of voters voted for B? That is 51. So B has won by how many votes? Two votes. Right? Now can I say if B, if B 1 by 2 votes, if B 1 by 2 votes, then the total vote is 100, right? If B 1 by 1 vote, then the total vote is 100 upon 2. And the B 1 by 200 votes, then the total vote is 200 into 100 upon 2. And hence your answer is 10,000. So this is as simple as that. So what is the total number of voters? 10,000. I hope I have made you understood how I solve this type of questions. Very crucial, like very important, like this is you should understand like how basically I'm solving this type of questions.